Okay, I think it, uh, the movie stopped while I was speaking, but we're on slide seven. Uh, and at this point, we move into the early 19th century with the Industrial Revolution. And this was the beginning of mass production of products. Uh, and it led to three stages of marketing. But the main thing to remember is that uh, we began to mass produce things in such a way that we had a glut of products. Uh, one of the first products we started with was soap, and uh, ivory was one of them, uh, Pears Soap in England. So we're producing things, and now we have to get people to buy them. So what do we do? We have to advertise to get people to buy them. And because we're advertising, we want to show everybody that we're the one that you want to buy. We're, we have the product that's better than all the other products. So we lead to three stages of marketing. The first is production-oriented, demand far outstripped supply, which is what I was... Uh, oh, the demand far outstripped supply. Okay. Could just advertise the existence of the product and where to get it, and whatever was made was sold because you have so much demand for something. Example, people wanted cars, so car companies made whatever they wanted and the cars were sold before they were built. And we get into Ford, Ford's production, uh, his assembly line, and you could have whatever kind of car you wanted as long as it was black. And so this, this was uh, production-oriented. Let's go back. Um, the demand is great, so the producers can produce whatever they want, and they're going to sell out of everything. Then we have sales-oriented, which is the supply exceeding the demand, like I said with uh, uh, bars of soap. Uh, companies tried to convince consumers to buy their products rather their, than their competitors. Companies still made whatever they wanted, counting on their ability to peddle their products. So now we're counting on our ability to persuade people and convince people that our product is best. Uh, example, a supply of cars went up, so the companies made whatever they wanted and convinced people that's what they wanted. Um, and so here is an example of the uh, sales oriented. Uh, this is on um, slide 11. Pretty nifty looking uh, purple car and uh, they built that car and they knew somebody was going to want to buy it. We just have to show them that our car is better because it has really big tails, tail fins, um, that it's long and somehow they're going to find a place to park it uh, so that's, that was the, um, sales oriented. Um, then we have marketing oriented, which is the third, uh, type. Supply of products far exceeded the demand. More choices than any promotion could overcome. And there's a resistance to hard sell tactics. So, what do you do? How do you sell? Companies tried to discover what products consumers wanted before making them. Now there's a thought. Uh, then advertising that they had it. Uh, Non-American companies, for example, VW found out what people wanted, then built cars that had it. For example, a gas gauge. Um, for example, um, we have a smart car today that's very small. Uh, all, all people wanted was enough for two people, and that's what it, it fulfills, that need. Uh, it's easy to park, and they sell a lot of them. Uh, the last time I was in England, um, that's all you saw, pretty much. Uh, and here we have an example of advertising for the um, VW. This uh, Think Small campaign was a huge success. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's considered one of the top 100 advertising campaigns, and most of the time I see it in the top 10. Uh, then, then they started advertising Volkswagens as a lemon, 
and you go, why would they want to advertise it as a lemon? Well, you want to read about it. It makes you want to read it. So that's really interesting. Um, then in 1833, you might remember we had the New York Sun and the first successful penny newspaper founded by Benjamin Day. It revolutionized distribution by selling lots of 100 to boys to sell on the street. So the little boy would get up very early, be the first one in line, purchase his 100 newspapers and run out and sell them and then try to sell another 100. And by 1837, the circulation reached 30,000, which was a lot of people back then. And then we're on uh, slide 15 now. Uh, the first advertising agency opened in 1843. Uh, it was also in Philadelphia. A lot was going on in Philadelphia, uh, not just the beginning of a country. A man named Volney Palmer was the first true ad agency man in 1843. He was in charge of brokering space for advertising more than for the actual creation of the ads. So he would, uh, somebody would come to him and he would uh, deal with the newspapers regarding the cost of the space. And of course, he would tack on a little for his own profit, and then he would sell it for that. Um, then in 1873, there was a convention of advertising agents in New York. So it didn't take very long for this to catch on uh, as a means of making a living. A few years later, James Walter Thompson, it's now called JWT, it's still in existence, uh, created the position of account executive for himself and went into the business of general magazine advertising. This was the beginning of creative advertising in this country, uh, and they, they exist all over the world right now. Uh, and then 1880... The first full-time retail advertising copywriter. So it wasn't enough to be artistic and be able to put an ad together. You needed the persuasive writing, the copywriting. It was a skill in and of itself. And there's some very famous copywriters. Uh, in 1880, department store founder John Wanamaker became the first retailer to hire a full-time advertising copywriter named John E. Powers, who is considered the father of modern creative advertising. Here we have another father. Uh, we probably had some mothers in there, but uh, I don't mean some others, some mothers in there, but we don't know too much about them because the people who were writing the books uh, were the men and they didn't write about the women. All right, we'll pause here and continue.